Hello everyone, this is Lexanen, and today let's take a look at the latest update released for the sandbox evolution, Pac-Man. Pac-Man is one of the most influential franchises in the video gaming world, its legacy tracing as far back as the arcades of the early 1980s. Now, you too can take control of this hungry yellow mascot to play through action-packed, maze-style levels and even create some mazes of your own, too. So, let's jump right in. First, let's cover the gameplay and controls. You control this fellow, Pac-Man. He's quite hungry, and his favorite food just happens to be the white pellets scattered all around the maze. The controls are pretty simple. Pac-Man will move automatically in a single direction, eating any pellets in his way, until you either adjust his path or run into a wall. To change Pac-Man's path, just swipe in the direction that you want him to go. At the next intersection, Pac-Man will go that way. The goal of the game is to eat all of the pellets in the maze, which triggers your victory. Of course, you're not alone in the maze. A series of ghosts will constantly chase you through the level trying to get you. If you collide with one of the ghosts, you will lose a life. Lose all of your lives, and the game is over. Eight different ghost enemies have been added to the game, and each one has a different movement pattern that they use to find Pac-Man. I'll start with the four most iconic ghosts of the game, Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. Blinky is the most straightforward. He simply tries to find the shortest path to Pac-Man's current location. Unlike all of the other ghosts, Blinky will also become faster as you eat more pellets. Pinky targets the space slightly in front of Pac-Man rather than Pac-Man directly. This makes him try to ambush the player. Inky can be a little bit unpredictable as he tries to move to a point that would center Pac-Man between himself and Blinky. This tends to make Inky more aggressive as Blinky gets closer and closer to Pac-Man. By contrast, Clyde's behavior is a bit more skittish. When Clyde is far away, he heads straight for the player. However, when he gets closer, he'll instead switch to wandering around a bit aimlessly. The other four ghosts are Spunky, Punky, Funky, and Sue. Each of these enemies has a vastly different behavior than the others. Spunky remains asleep and motionless until Pac-Man comes near, which causes the ghost to awaken and give chase. Punky also stays motionless, but is constantly looking around for Pac-Man. Upon seeing him, this ghost rushes straight in that direction. Funky simply moves back and forth horizontally, changing directions when he hits a wall. Sue also moves horizontally, but always tries to align herself with Pac-Man's current position. With all of these different types of ghosts, you can make all kinds of creative challenges. Now that you know how to play a Pac-Man level, it's time to dive into making one. To create a Pac-Man level, you select Pac-Man mode at the World Creation screen. Notice how the default level sizes are very small. This is because the Pac-Man elements are also quite small. In fact, Pac-Man himself is only two pixels wide. As usual, though, you can adjust the size of the world if you need to. Here's a little tip. You can hold down the size change buttons to make them increment faster. Once you're ready, tap the Create button to proceed. As soon as you enter Create mode, you'll notice that a number of Pac-Man elements have already been placed down for you. For example, a majority of the world is covered in a special element called Pac-Man Grid. This element represents the walls of the maze. On the sides of the maze are two boxes named Pac-Man portals. When you touch one, it teleports you to the other portal linked to it. In the middle is the Ghost House. This is where Pinky, Inky, and Clyde will typically begin the game. As you eat more pellets, the ghosts will exit the house and begin chasing you. Speaking of pellets, the easiest way to make the actual maze is using the pellet element. By drawing lines of pellets through the Pac-Man grid element, you can create pathways through the walls. Here's another world-building tip. 
The grid background shows you individual pixel locations, and you can draw the pellets along the lines of the grid. To the left of Pac-Man, you'll notice a large white dot. This is a power pellet, one of the power-ups in the game. After eating a power pellet, the ghosts will turn blue, and you can eat them as well to earn extra points or just get out of tricky situations. There are other power-ups as well, such as the time stop. It does exactly what you think it does. The stealth element will turn Pac-Man invisible, allowing him to temporarily move through the ghosts. The fruit spawner will occasionally make fruit appear at that spot. The fruit is worth extra points. You can even place keys that will open locked doors in the maze. You can use these to create hard-to-reach bonuses, or even a series of connected maze levels. To customize your world, there are also several different colors of grids available, as well as solid color backgrounds to go with them. To wrap things up, here's a big tip to help you design unique Pac-Man levels. So far, I've only discussed creating mazes with the new Pac-Man elements. However, there's nothing stopping you from using the other elements, too. This means that you can unleash the full potential of the sandbox evolution in your Pac-Man levels as well. Things like particle interactions, circuits, enemies, treasures, temperature, humidity, lights, nature, disasters, checkpoints, decorative elements, pixel art, and yes, even cows. It's all available to you, so feel free to go nuts and create the wildest, most imaginative Pac-Man worlds you can. Then, once you've finished your masterpiece, be sure to share it to the gallery so that everyone can enjoy it. That's it for now. Have fun creating new and exciting worlds with this latest update to the Sandbox Evolution.